how the Aegis turns against its master. Happy to concede this point, but what about the Count? Have you forgotten that he gave you life and whispered the order that animates you? Look how he runs, the coward! Do you understand what he has in mind? La pauvre enfant sleeping so sweetly, she won't be dreaming for long now! Garçon! Atenaeus! Don't move! The time has come to set you free, Aegis. This whore's soul has poisoned your cogs for too long. Adieu, sad puppet. No! Bonte Devine, I don't want to die! Nice. The sun is rising, and you have slept for far too long. The beauty of this world longs for you, just as you long for its light. For you are like the flowers that open in the morning. I know you, mon ami. We loved each other. Vous en souviens-t-il? <laughs> you gave me your heart. So please, let me give you mine today. Vive heureuse, Atenaeus. For it is happily that I leave this world. Monsieur, we have the king. It is now up to us to wield his scepter. In this trying time, crucial decisions must be made without delay. First and foremost, we must take back Paris. And how do we do that, mon dieu? There are automats everywhere, and they are constantly regenerated by their crimes. We have the king. Cagliostro has fled, but he is leaving a trail of blood. I doubt he will survive his injuries. As a result, the automats are left to their own devices, with no one to give them orders and no reinforcements. And since I'm sure that Parisians will no longer venture out into the streets, the machines will soon have no more souls to harvest. Sooner or later, they will no longer be able to move, and par la grâce de Dieu, will become inanimate objects again. It's a matter of days, weeks at most. Mais ensuite, once peace has been restored, what of the kingdom? This is indeed a crucial issue. Leaving the nation without a government would expose it to the greatest danger. Worse, it would condemn it to civil war. Eh bien quoi, monsieur? Can you not govern together? Unfortunately, the disagreements that divide our assembly run far too deep. That which we can agree is that we have been given a chance to choose the person who shall succeed the tyrant. I believe I am the person who is best suited to exercise power. Of course, I will only hold office for as long as it takes to set up a new assembly and a government of the people. For the French will no longer tolerate a king. We can be sure of that. Are you joking? 
What have you done that would convince us to let you take down the monarchy? Answer, Monsieur de Robespierre. You have our full attention. Everyone here knows that I have the fortune that Monsieur Necker was kind enough to leave us. My conduct convinced Aegis to entrust it to me. Do you think we are prepared to let a simple representative from Artois squander this treasure as he pleases? I promise to use every cent of it to help the nation recover. Do you doubt my word? No, I wouldn't dare. Oh, Maximilien I, man of great virtue. Go on, Monsieur de Robespierre. I flatter myself that while I have no personal fortune, I possess the greatest treasure of all, the support of the people, and the ability to convince those who are in error. Yes, I can attest to that. Maximilian is a just and virtuous man if ever there was one. Though I have always sought moderation and pragmatism, I now agree with him that in the case of abolition, principle must come first. You know that I share your views on emancipation. It is astonishing that I am never given credit. Monsieur, I rest my case. Very well. We must now make our decision. I pray that each of us shall respect this decision and set aside our personal interests for the sake of peace and the common good. Who among you approves the appointment of Monsieur Maximilien de Robespierre? The National Convention welcomes Citoyen Robespierre, Consul of the Republic. Citoyen Louis de Bourbon, former King of France, in the name of the French people, in light of the innumerable crimes of which you have been found guilty, the members of the National Convention, meeting as an extraordinary court, have voted to sentence you to death. The sentence will be carried out on the hour. Now that justice has been done, the nation is ready to hear your last words. My loyal subjects, since you must lead a lamb to the altar, since you must offer a sacrifice to this new France that you intend to found, I will be that sacrifice. How dreadful this world is, where beauty is doomed to fade and flesh decays. I found no consolation in this world. I vainly thought I was giving our souls the gift of immortality beyond our mortal bodies. The Grim Reaper was my sworn enemy. Influenced by the most awful of men, I believed that the genius of machinery could overcome death itself. Alas, I have lost this fight, and am branded with a mark of murderer. Life, even more than the crown, was heavy for me to bear. I have suffered too long under the thumb of nature, which I despised. As a child, I saw my older brother die. I lost my father in the prime of his life, and then my mother, who was even younger. My beloved daughter did not live a year. As for my son, the first of my heirs, I unknowingly gave him to drink from a poisoned cup. I mourn the death of these poor souls daily. My death will not unite us of this, I am certain. For I, in my misery, have lost the support of my faith. So, executioner, lay me down on this board, Vatu. I will sleep now. Sleep at last, and not to dream. 